friends welcome to electronic circuit hub so today we are going to understand about the boost converter design by using lt spice we're gonna understand how you're gonna design the boost converter by using lt 1071 hv switching regulator ic how you're gonna connect the external component in the switching regulator ic and and then we will see the data sheet of LT1071 HV and later I'll run the simulation and I'm gonna show you the voltage and the current waveforms at different nodes. So for this design my input voltage is 5 volt and the output voltage is 0, 12 volt and 0 0.5 amps. That means I'm gonna design 6 watt power supply wherein my input is 5 volt and the output is going to be 12 volt okay so before before i explain this circuit let us go and look at the data sheet of lt1071 hv so if you look at the data sheet lt1071 hv 71 hv it has 5 ampere and a 2.5 ampere high efficiency switching regulator so this is basically a switching regulator and if you look at the p features of this switching regulator it it can support the wide input voltage range up to 3 volt to 60 volt so you can you can if your input is let's say 3 volt you can boost the output voltage by using this lt1071 ic the quotient current is 6 ampere internal switch is 5 ampere switch and the 2 ampere for lt1071 okay very few external parts required we're gonna see this uh, self protected against overload the shutdown mode it draws only 50 micro ampere supply current that is very important and the flyback regulated mode has fully floating outputs okay so so if you look at the logic supply at 5 volt at 10 amps it can work up to 5 volt logic supply to plus minus 15 volt op amp supply you can design and you can also design the offline converter up to 200 watt by using this switching regulator okay so now if you look at the application typical application circuit wherein they have designed the boost converter from 5 volt to 12 volt okay and here if you look at here they have the uh, the output voltage is 12 volt and the current is 1 amp in my case i want to design output voltage 12 volt and the current is going to be 1 amps okay so if you look at at the v in is connected with the 5 volt and they have the 100 microfarad capacitor and the ground is connected to ground at vc pin we have a 1k and 1 microfarad capacitor and the feedback if you look at 10.7 one percent register and 1.24 is again one percent register this is the output capacitor so now let me run the simulation and let us see the waveforms okay so straight away i'm gonna run the simulation so go at run button and uh, window maybe tile window vertically so this is my input okay if you look at my input is 5 volt you can clearly see in the in the waveform my input is 5 volt okay the 5 volt and uh, let me show you now the inductor current how it looks like okay so that is how your inductor current is looking like okay this is your inductor current so if you look at at the startup at the startup i see the huge current and that is it is 7.6 amps then again it falls down to zero and then for few times it's let's say from uh, 1 millisecond to 4 millisecond there's no current flowing through it and then if you look at again the startup current is build up and it reaches around 4 ampere of peak again it fall down so these starting from 0 millisecond to i would say let's say 12 millisecond it has the startup condition after the 12 millisecond if you look at up to 20 millisecond we have the constant stable steady state inductor waveform so uh, let me zoom it okay 
so this is my inductor current waveform and uh, now if you look at if i zoom further okay this is my inductor current waveform and if you look at my inductor current waveform is not starting from zero it had some uh, voltage it has some current which is 1.16 amps and it attains the peak value which is around 1.5 amps and again it goes to the zero not zero it goes to one amps so what do you see here is we have here the inductor current is not starting from zero that means my switching regulator is working in the ccm mode continuous conduction mode that is how that is why you your inductor current looks like this okay and if you want to measure the voltage across the inductor so how are you going to measure connect one probe here dso probe connect one probe oscilloscope probe at this side and now if you look at the voltage let me show you what is the voltage let me show you so if you look at at the positive side the positive side i see the the voltage across the inductor is around 4.7 volt and the negative side i see the voltage across inductor is minus 7.42 so this is the voltage waveform across the inductor across the inductor this is the current waveform across the inductor okay now if you look at the switch node waveform so let's see the switch node waveform so i'm going to click here and let's see what is the voltage waveform at the switch okay now i'm going to delete this okay you can delete this so this is your switch waveform which looks like starting from zero and it reaches up to the 12.38 peak so this is the whole waveform at switch i'm going to show you the diode current waveform so this is the diode current waveform if you see here that is how it looks like the diode current waveforms and uh, let us see the voltage across the diode okay so the voltage across the diode looks like this looks like this and uh, let me show you the feedback voltage okay this is your feedback voltage and uh, it looks like this this is your feedback voltage it is coming around 1.24 and uh, finally let us let us see the diode current waveform and the capacitor current waveform so here i'm gonna check the capacitor current waveform okay so this is my capacitor current waveform let us zoom for steady state okay and this is my steady state if i move to in the same window so you can see id1 the diode current waveform and the capacitor current waveform and the diode current waveform start from zero and it has then slope and if you look at the capacitor current waveform your dc current shifted to zero so it start from minus 0 0.5 amps and then it reaches to the peak value that is how the diode current and the capacitor current looks like capacitor current looks like they both are in the same if you look at their overlap output current of the load if you look at the capacitor current it is shifted to the minus side that is why you see in the capacitor current waveform it is 0 0.5 amps okay now let us check the output voltage and output current okay so this is my output voltage and uh, and this is going to be my output current so the output voltage if i look at here at 11.97 it is very close to 12 volt and the output current is this and it is 470 497 milliampere that means output voltage is 12 volt and the output current is is 500 milliamps that is how guys you can design and you can simulate the buck converter in lt spice and you can further analyze the different voltages and the current waveform okay so hope you understood the design of boost converter if you have any further question on this topic, feel free to ask me in comment section. Thanks for watching this video.